Today, I'm going to share with you guys the best cavalry commander pairs in Rise of Kingdoms. What's going on, guys? Cheers. It's been over a year since I made a dedicated video to each of the troop types and their best commander pairings. So today we're going to fix that. And this video is going to be a general guide to building powerful cavalry commander pairs for open field fighting, and it should serve as a future action plan for free to play and low spenders. Because let's face it, if you've spent $10,000 on cavalry, commanders and gear you probably know all that you need to know and your experience with these commanders is going to be very different than that of a free-to-play player and of course to help us organize these commander pairings we're going to be using the trusty tier maker if I can remember I'll put a link to this in the pinned comment down below somebody remind me down there if I forget okay with that being said let's jump into the first pair I want to talk about in this video and of course we can't even start the discussion about cavalry pairs without Nevsky. In my opinion, I think he is the best cavalry commander in the game right now. And the best pairing for Nevsky, I think in the open field is Joan of Arc. If you're going to build a single cavalry pairing, this is going to be it. The synergy between these two commanders is incredible. Nevsky obviously has an insanely high single target damage factor with a really respectable enemy defense reduction. He gives you a ton of cavalry stats across the board attack health defense and he even has some extra health on his expertise as well he's boosting his army's skill damage by a pretty significant amount and this pairs very very well with Joan of Arc now unfortunately I don't have enough commander sculptures to go all in on Joan because I'm saving for infantry commanders so we'll talk about that in another video make sure you subscribe to the channel and consider clicking the bell to be notified when that video goes up soon but Joan of Arc is giving Nevsky the AoE that he desperately needs and she's giving him a lot of it she's also giving her army and two nearby armies a really solid five percent damage bonus and rage for the next three seconds so that's 60 rage total on top of that she's giving Nevsky even more health and attack for cavalry some normal attack damage as well more cavalry damage and the expertise is crazy five percent more damage five percent more counter attack damage but the part that makes Joan of Arc incredible with well really with anybody but specifically with Nevsky it's the fact that her fourth skill causes her primary skill to trigger twice that's a 2000 damage factor AoE with the buffs that come with it that fires twice and remember if she's secondary that means this is going to hit during the period where the enemy has a defense reduction and after Nevsky's active skill goes off for the next four seconds after that you get an additional 35 percent extra skill damage on top of the 25 percent that you already get so that's 60 percent extra skill damage when Joan of Arc is firing those AoE shots this pairing is incredible I really don't have to say any more about this I think in general this is the best open field cavalry pairing in the game right now this second pair that we have to talk about involves our favorite commander William I love William dude I just expertise William and we have to talk about XY okay Zhang Yu where are you going Zhang Yu Zhang Yu primary with William secondary is an absolute AoE machine and while this pairing may be a little bit more glass cannon than a lot of players are going to like its performance in the open field just simply cannot be denied Zhang Yu has been a monster since the day he he came into the game and honestly I probably haven't given him enough credit here on the channel because his rage requirement is effectively 850 it's reduced when this fourth skill is at five it makes him one of the fastest rage engines in the entire game his AoE is insane but he also has a really powerful defense reduction that he inflicts on those targets he gets 40 percent of extra cavalry attack and some really important March speed here for actually getting away from fights that he doesn't want to be in he also stacks a bunch of cavalry damage and has bonus skill damage on the expertise now when you consider pairing him with William you're doing a couple of things one you're doubling up on AoE you're slowing the targets with William so that we have an easier chance of getting away with Zhang Yu in case you become trapped because again this is a pretty glass cannon March you do get 20 percent of defense when your Williams active skill hits a target but other than that you really don't have that much tankiness on this build so you do have to play very strategically and careful but you're gaining bonus damage outside of your alliance territory you're getting some extra march speed here you're gaining even more cavalry attack you're dealing a ton of damage to surrounded enemies and finally this is another march that's going to give your allies bonus rage so between both of these marches they're going to be feeding each other rage as long as they're within close proximity to one another and i would recommend doing that you don't want to have a single march getting caught in the open field but these two pairings i think are not only the best cavalry commander pairings in the open field on the game but they're some of the most powerful 
open field commanders in the game period regardless of troop type as an infantry player i'm extremely jealous of joan of arc and of zhang yu i wish we had uh, aoe like this all we have is guan and cpo meanwhile cavalry get four incredible open field commanders now an important thing to know is that when you're building these pairs they're not set in stone if you want to go with something like this you absolutely can if you want to go with something like this you absolutely can it depends on the particular scenario that you find yourself in when it comes to war but again this this video is general advice that will apply for most scenarios and I think these are the ways that I would personally build these four commanders next let's talk about pair number three and I'm gonna bring back a pair that a lot of y'all are sleeping on a lot of y'all are, are forgetting about the Attila Takeda dominance okay yes we're talking about open field Cavalry commanders and yes we're talking about Attila Takeda why are you guys sleeping on Attila Takeda listen Attila and Takeda have been a tried and true March in rise of kingdoms for a very long time they are a match made in heaven they both pair together so incredibly well that they're basically glued at the hip now of course you could do attila nevsky that's definitely common but for open field fighting you might look at this this pair and think that it's sort of outdated it's kind of old it's kind of last year's news and i understand that but one thing is true and this is just a fact attila with takeda gets you so many kills the traits are so good with this that even if you're not dealing massive aoe or you're not silencing the target like guan or reducing the health like cpo as a single march for your personal gain you're going to be getting a ton of kills with this the reason for that is because attila and takeda really punish the enemy for swarming this march which is one of the reasons why a lot of times it's kind of just ignored in the open field and if you're a free to play player or low spender that's exactly what you want you want to be hitting things without things hitting you back and the reason that this army is typically left alone is because the normal attack damage and counter attack damage on this pair is through the roof on top of the fact that Attila has the attack tree which means that he's going to be gaining a ton more rage when he is surrounded I like to think of Attila and Takeda as the original Pakal Herald yes Pakal Herald does deal AoE skill damage when it's surrounded so there's other reasons why that's punishing but Attila and Takeda were the original do not swarm me March and they're still used for rallies to this day for that very reason now sometimes again Takeda is replaced by Nevsky but that's the beauty of building these pairs if you find yourself in a scenario where you can only build one March and you want it to be really tanky and no one to touch you then great news you would just build this one March and you're good to go I know what you're thinking doesn't Attila lower the skill damage dealt by Nevsky yes it does but Nevsky deals so much skill damage already that it's it's actually the benefits still outweigh the downsides on top of that Attila's active skill has a really short but powerful enemy attack reduction skill damage taken is reduced by 15 percent you gain a bunch a bunch of Cavalry attack here 40 percent you get some March speed a chance to increase all damage by upwards of a hundred percent for two turns which remember the normal attack and counter attack damage is where most of the damage is coming from so to double that for two turns is crazy and on top of that he cannot be silenced by all the Guan Yu's that you see in the open field if you want to run away great news you get 50 percent extra March speed so as a free-to-play player you can leave those engagements with a little bit more speed and hopefully you won't get caught in the open field and all that stacks on top of the insane things that Takeda brings to the table so the enemy takes 50 percent more normal and counterattack damage these two really are a match made in heaven you're gaining another 40 percent Cavalry attack with a ton more March speed a small healing factor 40% defense that Attila really needs, even more skill damage taken reduction, and reducing the normal and counter attack damage that you take as well, on top of even more normal attack damage to burn targets. Y'all gotta stop sleeping on this pair. Now, it is pair number three for a reason, okay? These first two, again, dealing AoE and have significant debuffs. This is more of a selfish march to get you and your alliance a ton of kills and here's the part in the video where things start to change pretty dramatically I think these first three pairs you can't go wrong with there's a ton that you can mix and match but I actually don't think it's smart to build a fourth and fifth Cavalry pair in fact I feel that way for every troop type if you are an infantry main player I think you should have three infantry marches and two separate marches if you're an archer player you should have three archer marches and two separate marches but for the sake of this video I'm gonna give you guys one more pair of strictly cavalry that could be your bonus fourth March if you want to use it most likely you probably want uh Chandragupta with Honda Tadakatsu the only thing about this pairing is that 
I, I know Honda gets a lot of love from a ton of whales and other content creators. The thing about Honda for me is like, yes, he is kind of a universally incredible secondary commander. I can, I can see that, but I don't know. I think this pairing is for, I think this is for the whales. Okay. Realistically, I'm thinking you're going to have a Saladin with a Mehmed. Okay. I think that is probably going to be uh your your fourth pair now you may even do something like this if you're getting crazy the good news is that Lilith has already acknowledged the existence of the second generation commanders getting relics which means Saladin is going to be getting a museum buff in the near future it should be coming probably within the first half or first quarter of 2023 honestly the sooner the better I think Alexander the Great needs one as well there's a ton of those second gen commanders I could really use a buff now the thing that I actually like a lot about the Saladin and Honda pairing is that it's relatively tanky but it also has a lot of enemy March speed reduction Saladin's active skill reduces the enemy March speed by 30 percent for five seconds but when you pair him with Honda those first two seconds are going to be a 50 percent March speed reduction and Honda gives you AoE he gives you like 50 percent 40 percent extra attack a bunch of bonus March speed extra skill damage extra troop capacity a little bit of tankiness for the first hour really the existence of the salad and Honda would be to slow down whoever you're gonna hit and then you're gonna swarm them down with your Nevsky Zangyu and Attila marches and they're not going anywhere because of this salad and Honda okay so as a fourth pair it's more of utility and support and I do again think that your fourth and fifth marches should be one of each of the other troop types so your fourth pair in my opinion should actually be Guan Yu with CPO Prime this pairing doesn't really need that much of an explanation both these commanders have 2000 damage factor AoEs you're getting the silence from Guan you're getting a massive health reduction from CPO they're giving each other a ton of bonus stats Guan has additional healing factor he gains more skill damage when he gets a shield but CPO is going to give him that shield he gains infantry health they gain some March speed they also have the skill damage bonus on CPO's expertise he also increases Guan's rage regeneration uh, as a single infantry pair this is the best way to go in my opinion even with Sargon and Tariq coming out I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong but even with those two I still think that most likely your best single infantry March is Guan Yu primary CPO secondary it's just incredible it's a match made in heaven and you even don't even have to expertise Guan if you don't want to you could try to do a 5155 Guan and I think that might be a, a good way to save a ton of sculptures especially if you're not an infantry main and you just have average gear on them and the final commander pair that I think you should have is an archer pairing with Boudicca primary and Isong A secondary now this is uh, probably a little bit more controversial than the Guan Yu CPO pairing but the reason for this is that you probably have CPO expertise and this is just the easiest fastest and most reliable way to get him on the open field with a pairing that is uh, exceptional the debuff that Boudicca provides with the skill damage taken increase is huge on top of the fact that Isong Ye is going to deal a massive amount of AoE damage plus he gives a rage engine to Boudicca which she really really wants to fire off that debuff and that insane single target damage factor there's also a bunch of stats here for both attack and defense and there's also the relic on Isong Ye that gets him a little bit of extra defense as well plus he gives you 50 percent more skill damage I think it's 55 percent with the relic uh, and that's just going to make Boudicca's skill damage even more powerful. That's going to make the fact that they take more skill damage insane as well. You're also dispelling control effects, and there's just a lot to love about this pairing. And it's very simple to build because you probably, again, already have that Isong Ye. If you wanted to get fancy with this last March, there's a couple things you could do. One, you could do Artemisia here. This is going to make the pairing a little bit more tanky, okay? It's still going to give you some AoE, and the self silence that Artemisia has. Uh, is most likely going to be dispelled by the expertise on Boudicca as well so this is an exceptionally good pairing if you actually have the Artemisia or finally you could do a Nebu secondary to your Boudicca this is sort of a, a middle ground it's not as tanky as the Artemisia and it's not as glass cannon DPS as Isong Ye it's sort of right in the middle okay Nebu's five target AoE isn't as good as Isong Ye's but it is still really nice he gives you more defense and March speed than you get from Isong Ye he just doesn't have the rage engine but he does increase all damage by 15 percent which is crazy and you're reducing the target's rage so there's a little bit of a debuff on him as well so again Nebu is sort of the safe middle ground if you don't want to go all damage with Isong or more tank with Artemisia I think that would be the way to go but again most likely 
this is going to be the march that you have if you're not an archer main because you're probably not going to be investing in a lot of archer commanders but Yi song a is almost definitely one that you will have if you've started the game off with him because he's one of the best commanders in the game now i recently made an entire equipment guide so i'm not going to talk too much about equipment here in this video but for cavalry players um this is a good starting point for your cavalry if you don't have something like this then you probably don't want to even start fighting i think this is sort of like the minimum requirement you might be missing a talent on one or two of these pieces it's fine but in general i would say this is the starting point moving forward i would recommend replacing the boots and then the chest piece this is going to swap the uh the blue boots basically for some health boots which are going to be really important the chest is going to switch from defense to a health bonus from there i would actually work towards more of what i have on my nevsky here where you switch the gloves to navar's control and then eventually you switch to the war helm of the hellish wasteland this is sort of the last one that you go for because the talented blue helmet already gives you eight percent so i mean you're only getting a couple of extra percent there on on that helmet change and then eventually you'll build a set like this where you're you're going to get like an extra half percent of health with the ash of the dawn legs and you'll eventually get the rifle for the weapon again check out the equipment video if you want more in-depth for that but guys this is sort of the five marches that i would recommend running for a cavalry main player three powerful cav armies and then support them with a single very powerful army of each of the other troop types so that way you're a little bit more well-rounded you also have a use for those troops and you gain the benefits of these incredible commanders in the open field and all the debuffs and buffs that they bring you for your cavalry marches with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful or informative make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps me defeat the youtube algorithm also lilith told me that if you leave a ton of thumbs up on this video they're gonna give a saladin a really powerful museum relic so go ahead and click it i mean why risk it right it only takes you a second and if that gets you a better relic here then hey, just go ahead just do it while you're down there go ahead and subscribe to the channel and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload an archer and an infantry guide just like this comment down below your thoughts on the cavalry marches we shared in this video today and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace